our last episode, we mentioned that up to 25,000 different metabolites are produced from the foods we eat on a daily basis, and that phase one and phase two metabolism are responsible for detoxifying these metabolites and preparing them for elimination. In this episode, we'll discuss individual differences in metabolism and how our daily diets influence xenobiotic metabolism. Have you ever wondered why some people respond well to certain medications and others do not? Have you ever wondered why some people can drink coffee or tea all day and have no problem sleeping, while others are very sensitive to caffeine? One reason for this is SNPs, or single nucleotide polymorphisms. These are single DNA-based changes in a gene. SNPs are important to xenobiotic metabolism because they can influence the speed at which a drug is metabolized. SNPs in genes coding for phase one or phase two metabolizing enzymes help determine whether you will metabolize a particular xenobiotic quickly or slowly. Rapid metabolism generally means that xenobiotics are more quickly made available for excretion, but could also increase the speed at which more toxic metabolites are formed. Slow metabolism generally means that xenobiotics are eliminated more slowly, increasing the possibility that a particular xenobiotic could build up to toxic levels. The bottom line is that the pattern of SNPs that you inherited helps determine how well you will metabolize and tolerate specific doses of everything from an aspirin to a serving of broccoli to a cup of coffee and why others might respond differently than you to the same dose. Since this is, after all, a food toxicology course, it's important to mention that some foods can increase or decrease the rate of xenobiotic metabolism. The most commonly cited example of this is grapefruit, which contains compounds that can inhibit CYP3A4. Inhibiting the function of this enzyme, in turn, inhibits the metabolism of common medications that are detoxified by CYP3A4. These medications include antibiotics, as well as medications used to treat heart disease and HIV. For this reason, many hospitals post signs in their cafeterias warning patients to steer clear of grapefruit juice unless they know it will not interact with the medications they are taking. Grapefruit is not the only food that influences liver function. Your dietary habits also influence liver metabolism. If you regularly drink tea or coffee, if you drink alcohol, if your diet is high in fat or low in fat, the levels of phase one and phase two enzymes that metabolize the caffeine, ethanol, fatty acids, and other materials in these foods will adjust accordingly. In other words, no matter what diet you choose, it can affect your liver function in various ways. Most of the time, xenobiotic metabolism gets it right. This symphony of enzymes faithfully converts thousands of chemical compounds we consume every day into forms that can easily be excreted via urine, feces, or by some other means, thus preventing toxicity. That's a pretty impressive track record when you think that some humans live 100 years or more. There are cases where xenobiotic metabolism goes wrong, however. Here are two examples. The first example is benzoapyrene, a product of grilling, frying, and other high heat cooking methods. Those with a chemistry background will easily identify this collection of benzene rings as nonpolar or fat soluble. Due to its fat solubility, Benzoapyrene is difficult to remove from our bodies once it enters. Xenobiotic metabolism is needed to increase its water solubility and eliminate it. Most SIP enzymes convert benzoapyrene to a more water soluble alcohol compound, but some of them, like SIP1A1 and SIP2C19, can promote the formation of highly reactive metabolites capable of binding DNA. If DNA binding occurs in a cancer-related gene and the damage is not repaired before the cell divides, the result could be a permanent mutation that initiates or promotes cancer. So in this rare case, xenobiotic metabolism can create a carcinogen rather than eliminating it. A second example is the combination of acetaminophen, the active ingredient in the brand name medication Tylenol, with alcohol. Since it is highly water soluble, acetaminophen is typically metabolized by phase two enzymes and excreted in the urine. If this phase two pathway is overloaded, acetaminophen can be metabolized by the phase one enzyme CYP2E1. Alcohol consumption upregulates the function of CYP2E1, making the use of this pathway even more likely. 
Unfortunately, CYP2E1, which usually plays a minor role in acetaminophen metabolism, can make a toxic intermediary compound that is extremely reactive and binds liver proteins. The primary concern with this is that the combination of relatively moderate doses of acetaminophen and alcohol have been reported to cause liver failure. In summary, the liver, with help from other xenobiotic metabolizing enzymes spread throughout our bodies, deals with unexpected challenges each and every day of our lives. With few exceptions, it assures that the 25,000 food-related metabolites we are exposed to do us no harm. So the next time you think about liver, don't just think of it as synonymous with a food you don't want to eat, or as some large organ that takes up a lot of space below your rib cage. Think of it as a guardian that's on duty 24-7 to assure your health and safety. Oh, and if anyone ever offers you polar bear liver pate at a fancy party, just say no.